morning everyone, it's Thomas here from Sinis. Uh, this morning I'm on the Sinis RS125. Uh, just out doing a test ride on the bike, you know. Um, I've done quite a lot of mileage on this one now, about 1,600 uh, kilometers. Um, yeah, so we've had a, a lot of requests to uh, do a video on this bike. So I'm just finally bringing it to you now. So some of the key features to look out for on the RS, you know, which really sets it apart from uh, other bikes in its class for the same money. Um, you know, just just start off a review would be the uh, the wheels on this bike. Um, they are mag style wheels. Um, on this particular model, they will be like a deep candy red. They're very very nice in person. Um, but the other thing is, is that the, the, the machine they made uh, slightly wider than uh, the other 125 tyres, uh, wheels, sorry. Um, so it allows you to have a bigger tyre on the bike. I'm going to hit the dual carriageway and just show you guys a, uh, you know, a bit of a uh, bit of high speed riding to show what the bike's capable of. Uh, because this bike is very good on the dual carriageway, it has got a longer gear ratio than. Um, than say the Apache, um, so it does have a higher top speed and can cruise on the dual carriageway, it's a lot easier. Um, obviously for acceleration it is a tiny bit less than the Apache, but it isn't really noticeable. The RS gives the rider a really, really confident, upright uh, position, especially if you're a learner. Um, you know, most sport bikes you'll lend down on and uh, they're quite hard to manoeuvre, um, especially if you're not used to motorcycles. This is a joy to ride and it's really easy to uh, use. Obviously it is capable of uh, fitting through the tight gaps as well. Like so. As I said earlier, those tyres are very, very good and dry, you know, giving the rider great feedback and the ability to, uh, you know, really throw it around. This has currently basically got a full tank of petrol. Um, the petrol tank on this bike, um, it does hold a lot of fuel. Um, you can put about 13 pounds in the bike. So at the moment it works out to about 13 litres. Um, and that will last you a very, very long time. I took this up to uh, London uh, and Kent a few weeks back, and I got all the way up there, done the trip, saw my friends, family, because that's where I'm from. I made it all the way uh, back on a single tank, which I haven't been able to do yet on another 125. Although I did just get back, but you know, it done very, very well. And that was down to the, the uh, dual carriageway for some parts as well, so you know, it is, it is open full throttle. I also took it to Portsmouth and back um, about a week and a half ago, and again, it handled it very, very well. And uh, this is the thing that blew me away with this bike initially, was uh, how much, how good the fuel was on this bike and how far I was going, you know, for my money. You know, in comparison to a two-stroke 125 or, you know, other, other carbed 125s, this is a really, really good, uh, really good setup. As it offers, it delivers good power uh, to the engine and good response to the rider, but also, you know, it, it, it keeps its costs down, which is really, really good. So the brakes on this bike, um, yeah, we've had some response and feedback from yourselves and uh, some positive, some, you know, not so much, uh, because on the uh, front of the bike, it has a very generously sized uh, front disc brake. It's, uh, it's quite substantial, to be honest with you, and it offers great braking power. But on the rear of the bike, it actually has a drum brake, um, which quite a few people have complained about. But not so much complained, just said, you know, oh, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a sportier style of bike, why do you have uh, a drum brake on it? Um, the reason for that is obviously it does keep the cost down. Um, but it's not just that, the, uh, just get past the story. The drum brake has been around for many, many years. Although it is an older design, it is very, very effective and simple at its job. Um, 
there's hardly any mechanical moving parts. Um, it's not exposed to the elements um, where it can rust or, you know, you don't have uh, seals for brake fluid to leak out of. It's not hydraulic. It's me very mechanical and, and simply designed. And uh, for a 125 that will be going no faster than 70, 75. Um, this offers really substantial braking. This is more than enough of what you need for what this bike's being used for. Um, I mean, even back in the day, the old 750 race bikes used to use drum brakes. And, uh, you know, obviously as time's gone on, you know, they were going very, very fast and under harsh braking conditions constantly. Um, for a commuter 125, for a road bike, this is, this is more than enough. Um, you know, and as you know, as a test rider, this, you know, I don't notice the difference between a disc brake and a trunk brake. To be honest with you, uh, on, on this on this one two, on this style of one two five bike. So the headlights on the uh, RS as well. Um, it comes with uh, LED side lights which are uh, integrated into the headlight unit. Obviously it comes with your standard high and low beam. Um, the headlights on this bike are very, very, very good. Um, you know, I've tested lots of bikes in the past and the, uh, the headlights have been absolutely awful at night. They're great, you know, it's fine during the day, you know, no problem obviously. And then as soon as you, it is even good in semi-lit roads. Um, but sometimes you hit a country lane on a bike and uh, where there's no light and it really does catch you out. But to say, this, these really do illuminate the, uh, the entirety of the road so you can see what's actually ahead of you when you're travelling, say, 50 mile an hour down a country lane. indicators on the RS125 are very very good. Um, they're LED, the front ones are actually integrated into the side fairing down here. Um, it really does boast a really sporty look. Uh, on the rear of the bike the uh, indicators are um, attached to the uh, number plate uh, bracket and slash rear mug guard. First of all is the looks. Um, you know, I'm, I'm only 20, just turned, so I hang around with a lot of people on 125s, if, if not all of them, all of us are on 125s. Um, you know, we, we go out on bike rides, bike meets, and you know, when I turn up on the RS125, uh, they have all their Yamahas, you know, the Honda CBR, stuff like that. This is probably one of the nicest looking bikes there. Um, you know, and it always does get a lot of attention at the bike meets. Um, you know, it's simply because of its design in as well. The, uh, it's still so many nice, you know, discreet angles on the bike and the, uh, the plastics and the fairings are just so well casted and designed and, and the finish on the bike with the paint is up to a really high standard. Um, when you put it side by side next to the Yamaha MT125, um, which is the style, it is both in the same style category, uh, you know, that is £4,300 brand new, depending on the dealership you go to. Um, you know, that's a lot of money for a 125. Um, and obviously, quite a few of my friends have those bikes. And the difference between this bike for £1,595 and the £4,500 one, there isn't the money difference in there. Um, yeah, they have a more modern Yamaha engine, but this has this is powered by the Yamaha YBR125 engine, uh, which is still currently used by Yamaha in the YBR. Uh, so, so it, it's, we've been using this factory for many years for the uh, SP125 and SC125. Um, obviously, we took the SP across uh, across Europe, and it held up very, very well. There wasn't a single problem with that bike, and we have many sold across the UK and used by training schools and customers. So the exhaust on the uh, RS125, um, it is a big exhaust, uh, but this does give the bike a much bigger look to it. Um, it is a standard exhaust, so it is very, you know, it is quiet, um, but you know, it does, uh, cosmetically, it is a good size and does make the bike look like a much bigger bike. This one doesn't have L plates on, obviously, because I've got a full license. Um, 
but you know, if, if you parked it up next to a big bike in size and comparison, they are very, very similar. So the dash on the RS125, um, you've got your petrol gauge, your rev gauge, uh, your speedo, which is currently in kilometres on this model because it is a test bike. Once the uh, official model comes in, it will be a miles per hour. Um, it's got a gear indicator, your tripometer, indicators, and high beam and low beam se uh, sensor, as well as a neutral light. So it comes with all the standard switches, uh, your choke is here, on, up on the top, so you don't have to reach under the bike on some other models, um, other, other bikes, other 125s, <laughs> more to the point. I love this bike man, it's so good, it's so good. <laughs> What time is it? I don't want to don't want to go into work just yet. I want to ride it around a bit more. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching the uh, video on the Sinus RS125. Um, if you follow us on Facebook, you'll be able to get uh, regular updates on this bike, um, as well as our other models. Um, you'll also be able to see, you know, a bit behind the scenes of what we do here at Sinus, as well as uh, new accessories being released as well as well as uh, we do giveaways and uh, you know also promotional offers and as always i hope you enjoy the ride which is a bit of a hot take.